Time now 7.24. Access to education for gypsy, Roma and traveller pupils has long been a concern. Now a new study has revealed the scale of the problem. Just 3 to 4% of 18 to 30 year olds from gypsy, Roma and traveller backgrounds accessed higher education in 2014. That's compared to nearly half the national population. Nine out of ten gypsy, Roma and traveller people leave school without five good GCSEs, whereas 60% of the national population achieve that level. Today's study says young people are worried they won't fit into university life and are put off by debt and prejudicial language allegedly still in use at universities. Ellie Mulcahy is the author of the study and joins us with Lisa Galloway, who is an Irish traveller, who is of Irish traveller heritage, I should say, and is working to improve access to higher education. Good morning to you both. Morning. morning. Why did you feel the need to commission this report uh, and make this assessment? So, um, King's College London commissioned the company I work for, LKMCO, um, to do this um, research because they are trying to take an evidence-based approach to their widening participation, which is where universities try to get underrepresented groups into university and support them to be successful there. And how does GRT, G the phrase used for this mm. group of people, how does that differ from, say, children in homes where parents aren't interested in their education or perhaps in, in rural areas where they're seen as detached from mainstream education. Mm. So I think it's important to recognise that they are, um, no, it's not just a way of life, it's an ethnicity, being gypsy, Roma or traveller, and there's many groups within that. Um, and it, it differs because they're not not valuing education. It's not a case of them not wanting their children to be successful or that they've isolated themselves purposefully. It's a question of the extreme discrimination and prejudice that they face um, from mainstream society and a lot of institutions that are supposed to support them. Um, and it's a case of them wondering whether the education that mainstream schools offer is what is going to make their children successful. And Lisa, this is very much your life we're talking about, isn't it? Because you're from a traveller background, uh, and of course you yourself had a form of education, but just explain how it was for you personally, and um, also you've got children too, I haven't do you? Have Nin children. 19 to 16. Yes. So you're well placed to say how, how it's worked in practice. How education may work. I think my, my focus is very much, uh, as you say, education, um, for who, by who, and for what purpose. I think we need to go back to that basic idea of what actually is education. Well, how, why do we value curriculum-based education over skill, life skill, vocational education? So what was your experience? Um, I left school at 15. Um, I was home educated. My father, um, actually, who was a very intelligent man, um, created this fantastic learning scheme for myself, lots of books. I was surrounded by books. Um, and, but I was a non-achiever at 16. Um, went back at 20 and I'm now doing a doctorate um, in education. So you took your exams subsequently, so the, the examination part of your education didn't, slipped by the by? Didn't happen. I and mean, actually, there's evidence to say that for many children who are perhaps disengaged, we use that phrase very, you know, sort of throwaway phrase, disengaged, I think the system disengages from those children and young people. Um, as I just said, due to perhaps that um, idea of prejudice discrimination, the idea that travellers and gypsies don't want education, don't want to go and, and, and get any qualifications. That's changing. That landscape is evolving and moving now. Um, what was the experience of your children in school? Because one of the things that's been brought up by this report is, and as you mentioned, um, bullying or a mm. lack of understanding from institutions, mm -hmm. but also perhaps even inside schools as well, from teachers as well as other pupils? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of schools in Blackpool um, that cater particularly well for children uh, now from GLT backgrounds. Um, but it's really important perhaps to recognise that. Uh, I recognise straight away that my children perhaps, you know, my daughter in particular, who's very much part of the, um, and friends with the travel community, uh, may not take to the idea of formal education sitting behind a desk. Yeah, bells ringing, etc., and everything being timetabled and timed to perfection. It doesn't always suit, you know, children from, from different backgrounds. Uh, and indeed, it was a struggle um, to try to instill in her um, to stay, the reasons to stay, etc. Uh, she did feel very different, as I felt very different at school, never really understood why. Um, however, she's now um, a blacksmith at 16. Uh, and loves college, has loved further education, and there's the root. It's that idea that um, gypsy children sometimes drop out of education, yes, 
But they come back very often. Well, I suppose, Ellie, therein lies the challenge, isn't it, for the education mm -hmm. system to try and engage those people, it, given what you were describing about maybe the way that they don't like the idea of the formalities around some of the ed education system. Absolutely. And I think it's about working with um, those children as individuals and um, working with the families and gaining trust to say, OK, these are the rules, this is how we have to operate in school, but not in a way where you're trying to sort of fit a square peg into a round hole sort yeah. of thing. Um, and I think also something that we need to communicate is that higher education, further education, there's a huge range of things that... Um, that young people or indeed older people can do and perhaps that is not communicated very well especially to children who perhaps parents or extended family haven't been to university um, so I think there's, there's something to be really said there Lisa's talking about you know sort of non-traditional routes both for her and her daughter but you know in education and we need to be telling all young people but perhaps particularly this group of young people these are your options and okay. this is how it can be tailored to you. Uh, Ellie thanks very much Lisa thank you to thank you, you as well. Thank you very much.